it is each of us. This is what is meant by I am. I, it's like one. One, me, and one, all of us unified. M, meaning exists now. In this moment. Not in history or memory. Not in some future time or goal. Now. It doesn't feel real to me. I was raised a Christian. I have no reason to believe that Jesus was an inside agent for this plan of deception. I'm not saying he was. Many of those who have come to earth as human teachers have tried to reveal how deep and broad and high this illusion has been made. It is as far as the edge of the universe and as close as your DNA. Everywhere in between is illusion. Jesus came to reveal much of this, but the writers of the Bible decided what would be acceptable within the paradigm of life as we humanly know it. They elected to make Jesus a part of a deception. They saw it was time for a redefinition of God to accommodate an evolving human 2.0. God was suddenly a loving father, and all of humanity was brother and sister. So you're saying Jesus was aware of this deception, but his words weren't included in the Bible? Our opinion was that his words were so against the conditioned beliefs that people could not understand them as he said them. And so, over time, they were translated into the form you know them today. The biblical translation simply lacked the original potency with which he said them. Besides, there are two methods that can make exposing this illusion a very difficult proposition. What do you mean? The first is that the unconscious mind system is inside everyone. It's like a field of information that everyone can access. It can affect or infect everyone. A revelatory idea can be passed to a small number of people, but it lacks sufficient influence to generate mass awakening. So there's unconscious mind inertia. The other, and this is more pernicious, is that the functional implants are programmed, and like any program, they can be upgraded or even turned off. As I listen to this story, I, I feel a little overwhelmed at how to proceed with the interview. I'm not sure what to ask or what direction to take things. If I look at my notes, I see my handwritten note, there is no God, is this really what you're saying? The wing makers refer to the triad of consciousness as having the God consciousness installed within it in the unconscious mind layer. But they also report that as the individual develops from about the age of six or seven, they begin to assemble their individual personality from the elements of the subconscious layer. By the time they're 12 to 14 years old, they have their unique personality well in place. For some, this uniqueness is shutting out the existence of a god. From Anu's perspective, this is fine. He probably likes having atheists and agnostics. It's more separation. More diversity. In fact, the greater the diversity in the human family, the greater the separation. The greater the separation, the easier it is to keep the program of enslavement intact. Choose sides and disagree with your opponents. Compete. It fuels wars and social unrest. As for the existence of God, we, collectively, are the closest thing to God. We are. That's the clear message of the wing makers. There is a first source, the creator of the life essence, a center point in existence that created the framework of existence through sound. But what about the ones who are enlightened or spiritual masters, they're all made up. No, it's not that they're made up. They exist. It's just that their existence is within the human interface or functional implants. They exist there. We, us, the being that is I am, that being is not of that reality. It doesn't really exist inside the holographic stage that was created by interdimensional beings millions of years ago. Rather, it is being used as a power source that animates the human interface or uniform. Over time, we've spiraled deeper and deeper inside of this created world, complete with its afterlife and different planes of existence. You could look at it this way, Anu installed a program inside the human 2.0 and in this program, humans would evolve from knowing absolutely nothing about their world to knowing God. Humans were designed to have God consciousness, meaning, to have the same understanding and awareness as Anu. But then Anu took this evolutionary line and positioned God consciousness so far out into the future that humans would essentially be chasing this God consciousness forever. They'd be chasing shadows, because until they awaken from the deception, the only God that exists in that world is Anu. Once awakened as I am, we are, or the sovereign integral, a human being lives as an expression of this consciousness. According to the wing makers, no one has achieved this at this time. It is, however, our future to live in this consciousness in a human instrument. No one has done this, you mean anywhere? On this plane, Earth, no one has done this. But remember, 
the wing makers are human in the future time. They have returned to our time to crack the shell open a bit. They have traveled to our time to remind us of what they discovered. They left this enslavement, so we will do it. But you already said that space-time is an illusion. That's true. It is, but it's hard to imagine that the universe in which we exist is really a hologram projection that was programmed inside our unconscious mind, and we're really inside this hologram, wearing a human uniform that was outfitted to perceive only this hologram. The wing makers say that the real world is sound. Everything is sound and resonance of sound. Everything we have in our human uniform for sensing our universe, is millions of years of evolutionary design, to turn into that hologram and only that hologram. How does that hologram extend beyond this physical world then? You said even the afterlife is part of it. There are many aspects to the afterlife. There is God, first and foremost. There is the light of illumination. There is the universal spirit and individual soul. There is a hierarchy of angels and masters. There is the concept of karma and reincarnation, or sin and salvation. The concept of heaven and hell. The concept of the chosen. The concept of an ascension path. The concept of the book of records or Akashic records. All of these concepts were designed into an upgrade of the human 2.0 interface. Certain human beings are programmed to find these concepts in their unconscious mind layer, and share them. As a result, religions sprout. Philosophies rise sometimes in support of the religions, sometimes in contradiction. Esoteric cults rise. All the while the human being remains lost. It remains muddled in its illusion. Everything tied to an empty promise and a belief, and in all those beliefs, one thing remains constant, separation. The program is vast in its reach, and the Anunnaki, once they had mined sufficient gold, had an entire race of beings enslaved. Anu, along with his allies, in the Syrian and Serpent races, decided it would be best to turn the human 2.0s into a worthless creature that forever sought enlightenment through belief. And who do you suppose would provide the things to believe in? Anu and Marduk. Everything became learning lessons. The earth was a schoolhouse. If you learn your lessons, you won't have to keep incarnating. Learn, learn, learn. But what are you learning? You're learning to believe in the afterlife as it was described and prescribed by Anu and his designers. You are learning to don your human uniform obediently. You are learning to discern how humanity is different. You are learning to link every self-image you have to the world of three dimensions, while hoping there is more after death. The sober reality is that after you die, the being inside you is met by a guardian who will take you to your destination, based mostly on your deeds in this life. However, most beings are taken to a life review where you face your life in every detail, and based on that experience and authority the figure will prescribe your next life options for reincarnation. You are essentially recycled into the same program with a new mother and family, and a programmed life path is laid out for you to follow. The afterlife program and process is all part of the master program to retain the enslavement of the beings. Remember, we're interdimensional beings, meaning we exist in 3D in the higher planes. It's just that these higher planes are designed by the Anunnaki. They are not of the real dimensional planes. Otherwise, we would die, discover who we really are, and we would never reincarnate, or if we did, we would tell everyone on Earth that this is all an illusion. Why? Why do it this way? It doesn't make sense. What began as an experiment, in three-dimensional exploration, from a higher dimensional reality, became what is here. Every human being will confront this reality eventually. It cannot be avoided. We can agonize about the lack of fairness or ask why, but whether it makes sense to you doesn't change the fact that we live in a world of design separation. Divide and conquer. The wing makers write of the tone vibration of equality. One second, I have the papers. Here's the exact choice of words by the wing makers. When all manifestations of life are genuinely perceived as fragmentary expressions of first source, the vibration of equality, that underlies all life forms, becomes perceptible to the human instrument. Life initially emerges as an extension of source reality, and then, as an individuated energy frequency, invested within a form. It vibrates, in its pure, timeless state, precisely the same for all manifestations of life. This is the common ground that all life shares. 
This is the tone vibration of equality that can be observed within all life forms, that unifies all expressions of diversity, to the foundation of existence known as first source. It's so abstract. How does it help? Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But the thing is, to change, to step out of this illusion, it requires each of us to wake up and stay awake. It's not reading words that will change this. It's the profound nature of new behaviors, because these behaviors signal that our consciousness layers are understood as separate from who we really are. We have to operate as I am, we are. Where does the Incunabula or Illuminati belong in this narrative? In the triad of power, the Incunabula is the capstone, also known as the capstone of the elite. I'll answer that later. I want to continue the story a little further. Okay. Human 2.0s and Earth continue to densify. We become increasingly three-dimensional. We are actually denser now than we have ever been, in terms of physicality. There was a time, about 40 years ago, when we thought alien races were actually leaving spaceships behind on purpose, but what we discovered, more recently, is that most of the aliens were not physical beings. They were observing Earth, and their spaceships actually became entrained by the gravitational circuits of the Earth's core, which caused their spaceships to materialize in three-dimensional space. Because many of the materials used in the ship's construction had chemical properties, they were prone to densification when exposed to Earth's atmosphere. You mentioned the Earth's core as being the cause of all of this. What's so special about it? The magnetic fields associated with Earth's core are unique. They are, in the words of the wing makers, alive. We can only assume that alive is an aspect of intelligence. The point in this, however, is that everything's densifying. It is compressing. It is compressing for a reason, the old systems can fall in unison when density reaches a certain critical mass. And that is what will happen. When? All I can say is that it is soon. I don't want dates and times associated with it. But do you know? We know a range. More than 10 years? Yes. More than 20 years? All I will say is that the wing maker's term for this is SIN, or the Sovereign Integral Network. SIN is the definition of the new system. They said it can come in an instant once the right conditions are in place. What is unclear is how SIN develops after the grand portal in Human 3.0. That's the first time you've mentioned Human 3.0. What is it? If human beings are trapped in a prism of illusion, as Human 2.0s, and their interface to the holographic universe is the reason for their being trapped, then a new model needs to step forward. Human 3.0 is this new model. It is the formula of self-realization. It is stepping out of the constructed universe or reality, and living as a self-expression of I am, we are. Human 3.0 is the sovereign integral. I call it Human 3.0 SI. You see, the Grand Portal is a way to synchronize humanity to a new inception point where it is living in the expression of oneness and equality, sovereign and integral, I am and we are. It is a way for humanity to move from separation, which was its previous inception point, the one that generated Human 1.0 and 2.0. Human 3.0 SI will have a new inception point, and the reason for the Grand Portal was to enable synchronization, because how can you have a network of equality and oneness if the beings were not synchronized? What is Soul, then? Soul is an idea or paradigm that has become part of the human reality program. Soul is the part of you that contains all memory of your existence as a Human 1.0 and 2.0. For most of us, this is a vast repository, far too large for the consciousness framework to deal with. So the soul holds this information for each individual being. Soul is a paradigm of infinite expression within a finite reality. But you can't be infinite in a finite reality, if that reality is a programmed reality. So soul is not the life force that powers the human consciousness. That is the sovereign integral. That is what each of us is when we are stripped naked of all illusion, of all deceptions, of all limitations, of all veils, of all functional implants, including the soul. It is the redefinition of human identity and expression as I am, we are. From a human perspective, the wing makers do not see humans as lesser entities, but simply beings with inception points that enslave them. It is not a judgment that humans are worthless or bad or sinful or weak or needy. None of those things. Humanity needs a new start. A point in which they can synchronize in one realization, and that is the expression of I am, we are. Living those words as behavior. Where is the creator of Anu the real God? 
How can we be allowed to live and operate in this kind of deception? The wing makers talk about the transformation mastership model. Hold on. I have the page here. This is how they put it. The time has come to integrate the dominant model of the hierarchy evolution saviorship with the dominant model of source intelligence transformation mastership. This integration can only be achieved at the level of the entity. It cannot occur within the context of a human instrument or an aspect of the hierarchy. Only the entity, the wholeness of interdimensional sovereignty imbued with source intelligence, can facilitate and fully experience the integration of these two models of existence. So what does that have to do with my question? Each individual being is responsible for this. God or source intelligence isn't going to come down from the heavens and correct human faults or obstacles. Humans need to take responsibility for this. But seriously, how? We're wrapped in so many layers of deception. It's not easy. The wing makers write about the hard virtues as the behavioral construct for this time, and how these words can be applied and lived, not simply held in the head as a worthy concept. I don't think you've mentioned these before. What are they? Appreciation or gratitude. Compassion, humility, forgiveness, understanding and valor or courage. It is the combination of nowness, being in the now, and applying these words in our behaviors. It's being impeccable in this practice. What happens if you do? The unconscious mind is a doorway into all beings. These behaviors go out to all beings. They support the building of the sovereign integral network, Human 3.0, which is the replacement of separation consciousness of Human 2.0. So this is the application of insertive behavior, which is to say, I will insert these behaviors in my nonus. They will become the palette of my behavioral choice. The other half of this equation is the resistive behaviors, and these are withdrawing and stopping behaviors that support separation and deception. These are active resistances. Saying no to behaviors of your own and others, without judgment. Again, whether you operate in the insertive or resistive behavioral mode, you are affecting the whole. You either support oneness and equality, the I am, we are, or you support separation and deception, also known in our reality, as the status quo. The starting point of behavior or expression is in the now. This is the creative nerve center. Every single now, is a potential to support oneness and equality in this world, and help birth the human 3.0, and the sovereign integral network. How long? I mean, how long will this take? The Grand Portal enables the Sovereign Integral Network. The Wing Makers suggest that around 2080, conditions should be ideal for this Human 3.0 to reveal itself. But they also stipulate that it could happen sooner or later. Why wouldn't Anu, since he's God, simply stop it? Or, if Marta could program with such amazing accuracy, how could Human 3.0 even come about? Unless he wanted it? There have been several interventions. While Anu and his Syrian cohorts were focused on the human 1.0 and 2.0 uniforms, they didn't pay as much attention to the interaction of Earth and the human vessel. Earth is an anomaly in itself. Remember that the Earth's gravitational fields interact with all life. Even non-physical beings, if they get close enough, and stay long enough, can be materialized in this plane of existence. Anu did not want to be materialized in this dimension, and he could only appear on this plane of existence for short times, maybe a day or two. In this time, our time, right now, the Anunnaki cannot enter this plane. They're locked out. The Earth plane is too dense. So that is one reason. Anu's ability to interact directly with his creation has been curtailed. The second intervention point is that non-physical beings have woken up to this issue of enslavement. They see how it affects everyone. It was permitted in part, because the Anunnaki and their alliance partners were strong and threatening to many other races and beings. However, this notion of enslaving infinite beings, as a concept or inception point, was infecting all of existence. It was a fear-based, separation-based idea that beings eventually began to see as a degenerative force to existence. The native state of existence, which includes space-time and non-space-time expressions, is oneness and equality. Obviously, enslavement is only possible in a separation-based paradigm. The third intervention point is the Wing Makers. They were the part of humanity also known as the Atlanteans, but even before the Atlantean race, they existed in a pure state genetic template, and eventually these genetics were used by Anu to create, in part, the Human 1.0 and Human 2.0. 
Although with the 2.0 version, it was less pure, because Anunnaki and Assyrian genetics were introduced, among others. But the point I am trying to make here, is that the wing makers, as a future expression of human 3.0, have entered our space-time, and have begun to crack open this prison reality. The fourth intervention point is each of us, practicing the sovereign integral process. I presume the Incunabula and Illuminati have something to say about this whole human 3.0 plan. Am I right on that? Yes. Yes. The triad of power, however you want to define it, in terms of titles, is programmed to create their own human 3.0. This version will be predicated on the convergence of technology, in support of biological enhancements, that make the human vessel even more of a welcoming environment for the functional implants. The goal is to make an infinite human on the earth plane. Infinite by virtue of immortality. The fusion of human and technology or what some call transhumanism, is the goal. So, human 3.0 for the triad of power is very different from human 3.0 SI, as envisioned by the wing makers. You see, transhumanism is separation. It says we are frail, weak, finite, brutish, diseased incomplete. All of these ideas for technological implants and cognitive enhancement were parts of the Advanced Contact Intelligence Organization, ACIO agenda. The ACIO was building Human 3.0? Yes, certain key aspects of the transhumanist model. Not the SI version. You see, the whole idea of transcending, is linked to the inception point of separation. It is the IAM Supreme model. It says, the human vessel can be, and should be, enhanced in such a way that the functional implants can live forever. There are several things missing, according to the wing makers. 1. The unconscious mind cannot contain the data streams of a continuous species, and 2. The search for who we are, as the true source of life, will only be further obscured by technological enhancement. The realization of I am, we are, is not a technological realization, nor is its manifestation accelerated, by, or through technology, at an individual level. It is a self-learning and behavioral process. Nothing more, nothing less. So transhumanists want to transcend human suffering, ignorance, and mortality through technology, and the ACIO was providing some of the technology to do this, but who would have access to the technology? The elite, of course. It would only accelerate and accentuate the separation. It is simultaneous empowerment and disempowerment. The economic models for the transhumanist diffusion, as it was called in the Labyrinth Group, were not widely considered. The incunable being the only exception. You mean they actually wanted to build a plan that made the transcending technologies available to everyone? They looked at it from two angles. One, if the technology could be introduced at birth, it would mitigate the cost issues of healthcare and education, offsetting diffusion costs. But it would have to be a government implemented service. No private company could secure sufficient trust. So a critical component was to make the United Nations, the credible world organization that could introduce transhumanism to the global stage. The second angle, was to allow class distinctions and free markets, to eventually make the technology irresistible to everyone, and then allow government subsidies to bring down the cost sufficiently to enable its dispersion. All of this sounds very altruistic, but the quality of the technologies would be variant. Elite classes would be able to secure higher quality implantations coupled to more responsive genetics. This would simply be a human civilization, that would be attempting to purge discontent and disobedience, in favor of participation in a ruled system of government, by elite transhumans. Technology will evolve from external and personal, to external personal, to integrated personal, to internal personal. Transhumanism is the last phase, and it is the phase that the elite are moving to. The internal personal is based on exactly the same paradigm of what is now the human condition, namely, humans have a programmed interface that's integral to their human body, and is powered by the infinite source of which they truly are. Humans are unwittingly trying to be unknown to themselves. It's part of the program, according to the wing makers. Humanity will play God to itself. It will try to engineer a better human and a better civilization. It will do this because it can imagine how humanity can save itself through simple behaviors, and the realization that these behaviors can make. They will do it because they are programmed to become integrated with technology. This is the path that the wing makers seek to avert. 
They write that human beings are complete if they can step out of their consciousness frameworks and realize what is actually powering their systems, their artificial realities, their programmed existence. The integration of technology internally will only make this realization more difficult. I think you said on Saturday that there were prophecies of a synthetic race overtaking humanity. This sounds like what those prophets saw. Fifteen felt the same way. Fifteen is the genius leader of the Advanced Contact Intelligence Organization ACIO in the Labyrinth Group. He never assumed that they were off-planet aliens. These prophets could have seen human 3.0 transhumanists in some distant timeline and assumed they were alien. What about the military force? As you can imagine, this is where it will be tested first. There is a whole field of psychological technology that has laid the groundwork for the real internal technologies to flow into the military. It will be released there initially, so it can be properly defended for testing purposes. Once it's proven there, it will converge with the integrated personal technology programs of the corporate elite. When you say integrated personal, what do you mean exactly? Miniaturization of the technology will enable it to adorn the body. It will not be internal yet, but it is part of the human body, like clothing, glasses, watches, and jewelry. Bear with me, but let me see if I have this straight. Human 1.0 was a creation of a godlike being. No. Anu is the same as us, or the Atlanteans. He was no more intelligent or godlike. He was deceptive. That is the only distinction. Okay, but Anu created Human 1.0, and then found them to be too similar to his own capabilities, and feared they would one day figure out that they were Atlanteans, enslaved by the Anunnaki. And he was worried about the consequences of that discovery. So, he wiped them clean with the planetary flood. According to the Wing Makers, the flood was one part of the extinction program. But there were also nuclear weapons that were discharged on the planet, most of which have been explained away as meteorite impacts. But the wing makers write that these were advanced weapons used against human populations that had avoided the flood. Okay. In whatever way human 1.0s were eliminated from the planet, they were replaced by human 2.0, and these included upgrades like self-reproduction and more advanced programming. And central to this programming was the notion that Anu was God, and would return to his creation. Correct? Yes. And the next upgrade to Human 2.0 branches out like a fork in the road. One version of Human 3.0 goes down the path of technology integration, or transhumanism. The other version, 3.0 SI, is a more organic process of using behaviors to support this process of becoming a human 3.0 or sovereign integral, and then becoming part of a network of these sovereign integrals. Is that correct? You have the general idea, yes. And the triad of power wants human 3.0 to go down the path of technology integration, because that is how they are programmed, to emulate their god, Anu. Right? Yes. So it's kind of like humanity sits at a crossroads. On the one side is the triad of power, that is programmed to develop human 3.0 as a, a cyborg, I guess, and the other side is the future existence of humanity urging us to do it internally, one person at a time, through a behavioral process. I guess the part that's missing for me is the role of the grand portal, which remains unclear. I thought it was a technology that proved the existence, the irrefutable scientific existence of the human soul. How does that figure into this? There are humans here who are designers of the new unconscious mind that will bridge human populations everywhere on the planet to feel and express equality and oneness. It will connect humanity and the I am, we are, consciousness, instead of the separation consciousness. It will not be based on hierarchy. The deception is coming down. One of the things that was never disclosed in the materials, including my previous four interviews, is that certain information was to be withheld. Some information was even veiled to not raise the ire of the triad of power. This information, this interview, will not be disclosed in the same timeline as the previous four. Why? The designers of the new unconscious layer of the human 3.0 are on the planet now. They are doing some of the preparation required to move humanity, who will be sitting at the fork in the road in the next 40-50 years, to choose the I am, we are, path. So I can't release this interview? No. When it's time, I will contact you. You said some of the information was veiled. In what way? The wing makers will only release some of the information now, in 1998. That is the information that will not feel too revolutionary. Too radical. It needed, in their own words, 
to cross into the human interface and activate a willingness to listen to their voice. For example, they used the term wing makers to describe themselves, knowing it would have a connection to the angel construct. But you said the wing makers were a future representation of human beings, presumably, from this disclosure, version 3.0. Right? Yes, but there is